Hi, everybody. It is time for the Module 5 video lecture. This is all about AI tools. Been a very hot topic over the last six months. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to start by connecting the foundations of AI to human language and to many of the things that we've already talked about in the course. Then I'm going to describe how tech writing tasks can be handled by AI tools. And then finally, I'm going to demo how one AI tool can work as your assistant, specifically with adjusting tone. I'm excited to tackle this lecture. Hope you're excited too. So I want to start by helping you understand how AI works with human language. AI is actually behind many common tools. Email filters are probably one of the most basic and first AI applications. I think chatbots are one of the easiest ways to demonstrate what AI can do. There are basically two kinds of chatbots, rules-based and AI-powered. I'm going to show you each kind so you can see the difference. A rule-based chatbot is simple and it has, therefore, limited capabilities. These are programmed to recognize a keyword or phrase and deliver a canned response based on that input. Many rules-based chatbots are button-based. They guide users down a decision tree where users are able to choose between a limited number of answers or prompts. Let me show you an example of a rules-based chatbot used by my veterinarian's practice. To start, I only have two kinds of requests I can make. I can ask for an appointment or I can ask them to fill a prescription. I do have the option of talking to a staff person. If I request an appointment, there are several fields I have to fill out. The issue with this is, let's say, this happened to me recently, Let's say, I don't know if I really need an appointment. What I want is for the vet to tell me whether it's important that I bring my two-year-old dog in to have her look at an injured dew claw. It's not terrible bad, but I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. The only way I'm going to do that here is I'm going to have to not get information today. I'm going to have to request an appointment and bring my dog in. AI-powered chatbots are far more sophisticated. They use natural language processing, or NLP, to determine the intent behind a user's question so, or prompt. Instead of relying on keywords or buttons with predetermined options, users put in prompts just like they would if they were talking to a human agent, and the bot can often understand the context and give an appropriate response. So let's look at that example that I just gave about my dog again. In this type of chatbot, instead of choosing from options, I get to start with my actual question. Can you help me decide whether I need to take my dog to the vet? The machine responds accurately, but it doesn't give me precisely what I want. So I follow up with another query. This time I say, well, I don't have money for this right now. And it takes another try or so before I get the info I want. Can you give me some home care guidance? So it gives me a list of things that I can do. This isn't quite what I want either. So finally, I ask the right question. Do you have any recommendations for taking care of an injured dew claw? Now here I get specific things that are about what's happening with my dog. This example definitely illustrates why creating good queries is a critical skill when working with AI as a tool. So I'm using what's called hyper.ai here. Hyperchat generates written human language like ChatGPT, which has become famous lately. Hyperwrite edits it like Grammarly does and other tools. So all of these AI tools are built on something called Natural Language Processing, or NLP. I want to spend a few minutes helping you understand how NLP works. Turns out there are five basic steps involved when a computer deals with human language. 
Step one is splitting a stream of written or spoken language with no apparent structure on the surface into its smallest semantic units. These are called tokens. In my written example with Hyperwrite, can you help me decide whether I need to take my dog to the vet? It gets split into separate tokens, which in this case would be the equivalent of 15 different words. The stream is split. Step two is removing tokens that aren't important when determining meaning. These are called stop words. The computer has to be, the AI has to be given a list of these. In my example, the word the would certainly be eliminated. It doesn't carry meaning. So this step is about pruning, getting rid of words that aren't going to help determine meaning and intent. Step three is reducing variance. Those words that aren't important when determining meaning, and this is called stemming. So in my example, the token help would be categorized in the AI's dictionary as a synonym of helps, helped, helping. So it will categorize all those together as one stem with meaning. Step four is similar. It works by reducing variations. This time they're not fixed by stemming. So for instance, the, the token can would be interpreted with the same meaning as the token could in the computer's dictionary. This step is called lemmatizing. Lemma has to do with the underlying meaning, even if the surface words look a little different, not only about suffixes and prefixes. Step five is tagging each token as a part of speech. The computer's able to do this based on the relationship and context determined by the words that are near the token. In my example, this step results in tagging the two instances of the token to, T-O, differently. The first to is followed by a verb. That means the computer tags it with an infinitive verb marker or particle. But the second to is followed by a noun phrase, to the vet. It's tagged as a preposition. The computer does all of this by knowing the syntax of English. So at this point, the computer has broken the string of written language into structured, semantic, and syntactic components. Components like these are then used along with additional input and many, many more language strings in a process called training. Machine learning describes the processes that the computer goes through to accurately extract meaning from strings of human language so it can deal more accurately with strings it's never seen in the future. The computer determines intent by using clues like subject-verb combinations and associations of intent linked to that combination in the database of strings that the machine has encountered in the past. So in my example, you is the subject of help computer associates this combination with the intent we might describe as a user request. Then the computer looks up the best response to a user request and determines if it should provide advice about a user's future actions based on the other content in the prompt. Intent. This is probably the key point to understand. NLP allows computers to derive meaning or intent from human language. When I typed my initial question into HyperAI, it understood I wanted advice about when to take my pet to the vet, even though that's not exactly, I didn't ask for advice, I just asked a question. It didn't give me other information about, for example, veterinarians or the most common diseases that vets treat or whatever. It recognized my intent as give me some advice. That's pretty powerful. Now that you understand a little bit about how NLP is involved in making AI work, I want to talk about the range of writing tasks that can be handled with AI. I'll divide my description into three parts based on the phase of writing. I chose a simple division of the entire writing process. Drafting is what many people associate with the meaning of writing. Pre-writing, though, takes place before you draft. Revising happens after you've drafted. I'll start with tasks completed in the pre-writing phase. 
We might say there are two types of help a tech writer could get from AI before they're ready to begin drafting. In other words, you're still in the planning or research phase. One way to get help at this stage is to query it about topics of interest to you. Amruta Bernade, her video that I assigned to you about using ChatGPT for tech writing, says she used it to understand the basic concept of something called change data capture more efficiently. The same query she said in Google returns links to information from vendors selling products related to the concept rather than what AI does, which is summarize all the information and give you something that's slightly more objective. Amruta also showed how AI helped her generate a list of subtopics for a manual she was working on. She tells us one of the advantages of using AI to develop that list, it was far more than one additional input about subtopics. So it's not just like talking to your neighbor at work about what topics they would put in. You got a summary of many people's ideas, or she got a summary of many people's ideas. She sees this as a huge time saver for her but not a substitute for sharing her list with, for example, the SMEs at her company because what they think matters more. You could also ask AI to help you create an outline for, let's say, a genre of text you're going to write. You see one here. HyperAI didn't have an existing template for creating a white paper, but it did create an outline one in HyperChat. Or if you need to write release notes for the first time and you're not sure what they're supposed to look like, you could ask HyperChat, show me an example. This is what it gave me. Once you're actually ready to begin drafting, there are quite a few ways that AI can help you. I do want to make it clear, however, that this has actually been going on for a while now, maybe longer than you know. In 2018, the New York Times ran a story titled, Finally, a machine that can finish your sentence. So if you use Microsoft Outlook for your email, you've seen autocomplete features since 2021. It's completing your content, it's generating content for you by predicting what words will come next. Many of the tools you're already using generate text, even if you haven't thought about it that way before. Until ChatGPT became widely discussed near the end of 22, most people didn't realize AI can now generate lengthy and complex text, even without a whole lot of information from a human being. That's what the G in GPT stands for, generative, generate. Ellis Pratt from Cherry Leaf, that's a technical communication consultancy in Great Britain. He tested ChatGPT's ability to generate technical documentation in December of 2022. Here's the conclusion he wrote about in a blog post that's included in your instructional materials for this module. Keep in mind, developers can already create instructions quickly by taking a series of screenshots and pasting them into a document, quick and dirty and usually an approach that organizations avoid because the quality isn't very good, right? So the fact that you can use the AI to generate text quickly, that by itself is not going to be enough of a driver to start using it. So Ellis said that the instructions that were created by ChatGPT, the documentation that he had it create, it was a little wordy, so it probably would need some human intervention or additional AI intervention. And he concludes that ChatGPT could be a time-saving tool for technical authors rather than a threat to their career. I'm asking you to read about several people's opinions on this topic, and I'll be interested to hear what you think. Word-level software tools for refining existing written English have been around for a very long time. Spell checking was first offered in the software program called WordStar in 1979. That would have been a rules-based rather than an AI system. Grammar checking was first offered in a program called Grammatic in 1982. So today, Grammarly is a very popular tool to revise or refine writing. It provides suggestions on things like grammar, spelling, punctuation. It also fixes typos, identifies potential plagiarism, etc. Amruta's video about ChatGPT also presents most helpful uses for a tech writer, 
in maintaining consistency in voice and tone. This is important to us in this class. At this point in time, okay, let me say yesterday, ChatGPT released a new version that might make this inaccurate. But when I was creating the lecture, there were better tools than ChatGPT for enforcing a company style guide, one that has to do with tone of voice. Often in enterprises, really large companies with multinational businesses, this is called content optimization. Two companies have been offering powerful AI products to revise writing in large enterprises for quite a while now. This is especially important if the company has to translate their content into a lot of different languages. Congri was founded in 2004 in Germany. If you've taken my technical editing course, you've seen a demo of a product that is very like Congri's from a company called Acrolynx. These products are very expensive because of their specialized capabilities, and both can be integrated with technical authoring or help system tools, not just Microsoft Office products. There are more simple and affordable programs for individuals and smaller businesses than Congri or Acrolynx, and there's better programs than Grammarly for refining written English. <laughs> Here's what Hyper AI told me when I asked why it was better than Grammarly. HyperWrite is better than Grammarly because it provides more comprehensive writing assistance. It can help with copywriting, poetry, editing, ideation, outline, translation, and more. It also provides feedback on the content you write and can generate images for you. We'll see how soon Grammarly changes. I'm sure it will. They're all in a race. So what I want to do at this point is show you a really simple example of how HyperAI helps you refine drafted text. Let's say I need to write a white paper on the topic of edge computing. I ask HyperChat to draft one for me. I decide the intro text is accurate, but I don't like its style or tone. It's definitely not plain language, which is what I want. So HyperWrite can help me revise at the sentence level by shortening the sentence I have highlighted. Gives me multiple options to choose from. It also helps me revise at the word level by finding a simpler synonym for the word I've highlighted here. Okay, those three options are not exactly synonyms. All technical terms are a kind of shorthand. In our course, what I want you to realize is you have been recognizing and revising tone of voice at both the word and sense levels. That means you know how time consuming this task can be. While there is no AI tool you can use without reviewing and refining what it suggests, these tools can definitely reduce the amount of time you spend on drafting and revision and actually on pre-writing as well. That's just not as relevant for this particular course. In fact, they often suggest options that you might overlook. That seems like a great partner to have with you. The bottom line is AI is an excellent writing assistant. It has to be used by a knowledgeable writer. It's here to stay, and it's going to become even more powerful in the future. In this final part of the lecture, I'm going to do a demo for you of the ways you can work with tone in Hyper AI. This is Hyper AI's homepage. I'm already logged in, so I can go directly to my dashboard, which provides me with lots of different ways that I could work with the tool. For the purposes of this video, though, let's assume I'm a writer who has been asked to develop content for an About Us page for a company website. I'm going to show you two ways to use the tool. First, we'll concentrate on Hyper Chat. I'm going to go ahead, there are different ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and open Documents and start a new document. So you'll see there are two sides to the screen. The left side is what I would call the document editor. The right side can serve different functions. So it's your sidebar helper. It's your assistant. It automatically opens in auto write. This is the hyper write function. This hyper chat is the newer function. That's the one we're going to use first. I start by formulating a prompt. Once I have the prompt done, I enter it. 
HyperChat goes to work and it creates a paragraph for me. So there's my paragraph. Software company specializes in helping small lenders streamline their operations, increase efficiency, found it in. All right, so one of the things I know is that's incorrect, but the content in Hype doesn't go back beyond 2021. That would be true of many of the chat tools available currently. That will be different over time. Our team of experienced professionals dedicated to providing the best customer service. So let's say I'm not particularly happy with the amount of detail. So maybe, let's see, what does Loan Biz help stand? How do they stand out? Or what kind of service? Let's say I want to add what kind of services. Now it uses its knowledge of what loan servicers do. Tailored to each lender, a suite of pre-built products. Data integration, customer support training. Okay, let's say I'm fairly happy at this point with the content it's given me, but I'm not happy about the tone. I think it's a little too formal. And so what I can do is I can, there's no button here for me to use that will alter the tone, but I can always just simply chat with HyperChat and it will try and do what I want it to do. So let's try and make it more friendly. All right, one of the things that it's done that I can see is different is contractions, exclamation points. Those we already know, those are signals of a more casual tone. It already had first person pronouns. So if I'm happy with what I've got or happy enough with what I've got to use it as a draft that I'm going to work on, go up here and say, add to the document. So now it's in my document editor and I can use additional tools or uh, do whatever it is, continue writing um, within the document editor. So I can also do things like copy this into a different content authoring system like Microsoft Word or Madcap Flare or WordPress or whatever it happens to be. Seeing how HyperChat works and how I could control tone or in adjust tone. Now what I want to do is take the same task and use HyperWrite. And in order to do that, I really have to start a new document. Now this time, the sidebar has opened in HyperChat because that's what I just used but I can make it go back to HyperWrite by simply clicking the button. You'll see AutoWrite by default is on top. I can look through templates here. Maybe someone's already created a template for About Us pages. In fact, I know there isn't one, um, but there are lots of them here and you have the option to create your own templates as well. For our purposes in the video, I'm going to start with a prompt. And the first prompt is, like, tell me what you want, and then I'll write it for you. So here's what I'm going to tell it I want. Now that I have my prompt, I could click auto write or I could give HyperWrite some more information to make the first draft better. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do by using the customize tool. Personalizing is what it's called. So there are a number of form fields available that you can use to give HyperWrite more information about what you want. This first form field says, what info do you want the AI to include? This is about what you wanna emphasize. So I've told it I want it to emphasize the fact that the company understands their customers better than their competitors because Loan Biz Help has been a small lender. That's where they got their start. There's more that we can do here. So in terms of style, so this is a particular interest to us, you can select a sentence length. Now, the only two options here are the default shorter longer. Let's see what it gives us if we do longer. Now there's an example for the AI to mimic. Well, this would be incredibly useful if you had an example. So if you had a piece of text that had exactly the tone 
and the style that you want to implement, definitely use this to get the program to mimic that style. I don't have one, so I'm not going to put anything in here. The next area has fields for different types of document info. Document category in the examples of school. Well, I'm not really sure what that means. One of the most helpful things is to hover over the question marks, the help. What is this document for? Oh, okay. So this helps me understand that what I really need to put here for my writing task all right, so I've only got 30, uh, 30 characters, sorry, not 30 words. I've decided to say it's to market the company. That's the point of an About Us page. In terms of topic, again, I'm not sure what they're looking for. So what does this say? What is this about? So category is what's it for. This one is about what it's about. So let's say... Ooh, I made it. Company history and mission. All right, there's an optional field here or another optional field for instructions. Um, I don't have anything in this case, but the example makes it clear. If you had a, a word limit, you could add that here. We keep going down the sidebar. We'll see there are even more options. So these settings actually have to do with how you want to interact with HyperWrite. Type ahead, you may have noticed in the form boxes even, HyperWrite was anticipating what I was going to write. You can turn that off, turn that on. You'll see that that's also up here at the top. And you can also tell HyperWrite if you want to give them feedback. One of the ways they improve is you say yes or no, up or down, thumbs up, thumbs down, after it gives you a response to let it know whether it did what you wanted it to do. Those are fine in the default categories. Now that I've done those settings, let's go back and click auto write. And the spinning tells you it's working. All right, and it automatically put it over here. When I hover here, it automatically puts it into the document editor. It was founded to provide software solutions. Sorry, it's cutting off some of this. That'll, that'll get fixed if I select it. So that's the first example. Notice there's a second example. Don't know where it got 1995. Did I, did I put a typo in? Possibly. There's a third. We could keep going. It gives you five different texts to choose from. Let's just go down. I'm just going to choose the last one. So now I clicked on it. And it is part of my document editor. I can close the sidebar now. And maybe I've decided I don't want it to use the type ahead. So I've got 82 words. One of the things that I can do is start making changes. One of the things that you'll see here is a tone indicator. Um, how creative or non-creative, less than creative, do you want the document to be? It's only going to affect what I type in next, what I add, if I change this. It's not going to change what already exists. For now, I'm just going to leave it. Many of the tone adjustments can be done here in the document editor. Let me show you uh, the three most important ones. If I highlight a sentence, let's say I've decided um, this one, this sentence is too long. You'll see when I highlight it, I get a, a drop down or a pop up. And there are several options here. One is, let's say I want to make that longer. The spinning means it's working. It's going to expand that sentence and it's going to give me options, three in this case. Okay, let's say I'm not happy with any of those. Let's just see what it will do to, say we want to shorten the entire paragraph. We've got 82 words. Let's see what it does if we shorten all of the selected text. It's giving me three options. All right, let's, let's try this one. So now it has replaced that only 32 words. Maybe that's good. Maybe it isn't. That, of course, is up to the writer to decide. One of the other things that you can do with that drop down is, let's say, let's say we don't know about that word. 
you've got two options in terms of tone that are default. So you can be more casual or more formal. What happens if I click more casual? I don't know what it will do to industry. So it's looking through its dictionary. Uh, it's going to rewrite more than just, okay, the industry of uh, gives the operations industry. Okay, so it's actually suggesting changes um, for more than just this one word. I didn't realize it would do that. Let's try this one. I love it in a chill way. Okay, so those are, those are all options, right? The final and the most powerful way to work with HyperWrite to manage tone is to use this custom icon. And now you can tell it how you want the text to be rewritten. For example, make it more polite or see more examples of what it can do. So here's where you could say things like make it in third person or if you want to make it in more plain language, perhaps you want to say use second person. You can remove jargon. You can add content as well or you can be more assertive. All of those, most of those have to do with affecting tone, or many of them do. The more you know about what aspects of human language affect tone, the better you'll be able to customize this tool. I've shown you the major options for using HyperAI to adjust the tone in written content. No doubt there are others I haven't used yet or found, and there'll certainly be more coming as these tools are changing rapidly. I want to take a minute to summarize what I've covered here in this lecture, because I know that quite a lot of it is new to you. First, I tried to make it clear how AI is totally dependent on natural language processing. That is what makes it appear intelligent. It can mostly learn to understand what human language is intending or what it means. And then it can generate responses that are often appropriate. The second thing I did was describe how AI tools can be used in all of the various phases of writing, from pre-writing before there's any words on a page through revising did say revising is the area where we're most likely to use the tools for our purposes as technical communicators concerned with tone of voice. Finally, I wanted to demo a tool. It's hard to pick the right one because they change constantly and there are many competitors out there. I used HyperAI to show you how you could use both HyperWrite and HyperChat to adjust tone of voice in the content you create. I hope you feel better about your knowledge of how AI can help you and also how your job as a content creator is likely to change in the future and require your use of an assistant 